everybody, my name is Christian Aldo and welcome to the Plastic General. As you can see, we're in the Pacific today and we were, uh, we were floating along with the U.S. Navy until uh, we got hit by uh, a Japanese destroyer. Sound exciting? Let's go to naval war! Whoa! Well, boy, I am so proud of you that you survived that treacherous attack by the Japanese. Yeah, I do feel really lucky. I want to thank you, Admiral, for picking me up. What can you tell us about the ship that you served on? I, I know you're having a hard time remembering. Yeah, you know, Admiral, I'm, I, 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 I've been out in the sun for so long, I, I just I can't remember anything. I, I, I can't even remember my own name. How would you describe that ship? I can't remember much, but it, it kind of looked, it kind of looked something like this. Hello everybody, welcome back to this installment of The Plastic General. I always tell everybody, one of my favorite subjects in the subject of 132 scale World War II is the most neglected subject of all, and that is naval warfare. Naval warfare, in case you didn't know, is actually, if you start to delve into it like I do, to me is one of the most exciting subjects. But the problem with it is there's not much available and whatever is available, you're gonna have to put a little bit of exciting work into it. But when you do, the payoff is immense. So the first thing I wanna introduce you to is this. Another converted 132 scale ship. Now let me tell you about this thing. This is a ship made with a generic sort of action figure name. It was like, like Action Force or something like that. I'll, I'm going to post a photograph of, of the ship. You can buy it for relatively pretty cheap at any Toys R Us store. And what I did is I, I removed the horrible superstructure on the top because it didn't make any sense. And I, and I made a uh, conning tower or like a, a command tower. And I, I went and, and, and bought some Italeri some Italeri uh, detail sets, like some, some anti-aircraft guns. And uh, I made uh, an anti-submarine weapon called a uh, hedgehog. Oh, and this is, this is, this is an Orlikan uh, 30 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. And I put that on there, you know, you just, there's little holes for other things. And, and then also I took some, uh, some tank uh, re, uh, fuel tanks for the uh, spare fuel tanks for the side of tanks. And I stuck them on there as if they're um, depth chargers. And, and look at all the fun details here. Uh, in the tower here, you have like the command station and, and like the little windows and stuff. See like if somebody, if somebody was in there, a little sailor, they, they could see them through the window. You've got to, you've got to man the ship, right? So in kit form, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of naval kits out there for figures. So. Let's get into those. So this first set we're going to look at was created by Italeri. Now it is a 135th scale kit, but these figures blend in beautifully with the 132 scale world. Besides, they're relegated to being on ships, so you really wouldn't put them side by side, but even if you did, they would still work. This particular set was designed by Italeri for JFK's famous PT-109 tor US torpedo boat. So these are the first two figures. Get in nice and close on these boys. Poses one and two. As you can see, they look very, very, very much like JFK and Robert Kennedy, <laughs> surprisingly. So actually they both look like JFK himself. One guy's really cool, you know, he's like, he's smoking his pipe, the other guy, and that's, that there's JFK again with his sunglasses on, being Mr. Cool. That's great, they're great figures. It's like something from that TV series, McHale's Navy. Poses three and four. Uh, you have your more typical sort of sailor uh, bringing uh, a bag of laundry aboard his ship or his boat. And this guy here is painting Battleship Gray upon something on the ship. So it's kind of fun when you set them up and they're all working or doing things or smoking or hanging out. Poses five and six. 
You have a figure just walking around with no shirt on, just doing whatever he's doing. And this guy's actually sitting on a life, life, life jacket, and he's having a smoke. He's taking it easy. Must have been nice being on one of those boats. 99% of the time, nothing, you're bored, and then 1% of the time, extreme action. For the seventh and final pose of this set, you have a guy sort of scrubbing the deck, which is fun and useful. Now for the next set, uh, Masterbox created a, a really cool little scenario set of four people in a naval scene. And so let's get started with these. The first one you have a naval commander, and he's just sort of standing there like the square that he is. And then you got a cool guy like me, and he's standing there, and he's showing off his monkey. And who's he showing his monkey off to? Well, a female naval cadet, and she's going, oh, look at your monkey. And um, she's impressed by the monkey. And I think what he, she has with her is a friend who's a, um, an Air Force cadet or something. And uh, they're at a dock, pictured on the, on the, on the package. And uh, the ladies are, uh, are admiring this, this uh, sailor's monkey. And this officer is kind of like jealously in the background like, he wishes he had a monkey. And then finally, a master box came out with a set of, of pinup girls for every branch of the military. And one of the, so I think there were six different girls. One was for the army, one was for the air force, one was for the navy and, and all these different branches. And so this figure was one of the navy figures that they created. So there she is looking sexy and giving a big naval salute. And thousands of big, heavy guns are going off to salute her back. So there you have it. Look how colorful and exciting these naval figures are. Now, these guys are more in, like, like fun little scenarios, like they're not fighting. But you know what? To you producers out there, I could easily see U.S. Navy sailors in combat, like fire, firing the Orlikan anti-aircraft guns or firing firing machine guns or, or rifles or throwing grenades. Like, they can get into skirmishes on the shore or ship to ship. Like, whatever. I mean, it's exciting and fun. It's the untouched thing. So let's, let's consider this. You know, so even with this really lax crew compliment, um, let's see how we can set them up here. So you've got this sort of commander, and he'll be up here in, uh, in, the, in the crow's nest here. And then you've got um, you've got uh, the JFK guy down here, right? And um, you got the guy with the monkey showing off, and of course, um, uh, of course, you have uh, JFK again. <laughs> Two JFKs, <laughs> or let's say you have Robert Kennedy. He's up here going, "Oh, there's my brother John. There's my brother John, and he's flirting with the ladies again." Now. Now you have, <coughs> excuse me. You have um, you have ladies coming aboard the ship, and um, and uh, they're having a tour around the boat. These poor guys here have to still continue scrubbing, and you have another guy over here painting, and uh, you have uh, the you have other naval guys, and they're walking around saying, oh, "Man, oh, oh." Then you have um, you have this uh, girl. She's going around doing promotional things for the navy, and. Uh, She's saluting, she's saluting the captain of the ship, and uh, and of course he's so charming because he's Mr. John F. Kennedy, and uh, you have this guy here sitting having a smoke, so it's just a fun scenario, but you know when they're this lax, something bad has, has got to happen. I don't know, Chewy, I got a bad feeling about this. Now, sailor. This is very, very important. What can you tell me anything about that Japanese vessel? Well, Admiral, I, like I said, I, um, I don't remember too much, but, um, I, I kind of look like this. So, yes, I created a, a vintage toy sin, but not for our hobby. 
This originally was released by Remco in the early 60s, and this particular battleship was called the, the USS Battle Wagon. Now, you can see commercials for it on YouTube. Fire missiles! Here she is, Battle Wagon, the pride of the fleet. Battle Wagon, the mightiest warship you'll ever see. It's pretty fun and crazy. It was made in silly colors and it would roll electronically and had all these big, ridiculous, oversized components and it was made for little kids. But when I saw this, I thought, oh, no way, man. I'm going to buy this thing, which you can score them on you know where. You can, for a couple hundred bucks, they're usually beaten up. And what I did is I removed everything that was corny and cheesy and then I replaced all the components with Japanese components. And so let's take a cool little tour around this ship. Uh, like I said, I, I removed tons of components. I'll include a photograph of what the thing originally looked like. But then what I did is um, I added in these um, these rear guns. And um, and so as we're going, I'm going to add in the figures how they uh, how they should go. So for the uh, the anti aircraft gunners, uh, one fits here like this, and then I have a another guy sort of like he fits in here now how did i make these figures um by their an air fix back in this in this in the early 70s released something called um they released something called multi-pose and what i did is i took they released seven different multi-pose sets uh one was uh two different american sets one japanese one two german and two british and what i did is i i I took all the different parts and I combined them to make Japanese naval troops and I just painted them up. And in another episode, we can go into those deeply. Okay, so in the front here, another another guy with uh, some sort of anti-aircraft. I have him sitting in here. Yeah. So he's firing those weapons. And these are Japanese guns. So it makes them extra realistic and cool. And then... Um, Oh, there's a, there's a special kit. Now these were the these were the air, anti air the triple anti aircraft guns that were on the Yamoto. So I added one of these on there. This is a 135th scale anti aircraft gun by Pitt Street. Also created figures for that. And so here you got a guy and he's he's loading the uh, the uh, the ammo clips onto the the gun back here, putting them in. And then this guy is operating it in under attack. He's on operating the anti-aircraft guns. And then um, over here, up, up top, inside the uh, awesome bridge here, we got a, we got a figure, a, sailor, uh, a, a, um, a Japanese sailor uh, steering the ship. And then I made a, a Japanese naval captain. And he's there with his binoculars. And then here, in the gun... Uh, someone gave this metal gun to me. It actually, I looked up what kind of gun it was. It looked like a Japanese um, small coastal gun. So I put this on here. So you got this guy. Let's say they're firing over this way. This guy's loading the shell in. And then you have another commander with a life vest on. And he's zeroing in on. He's spotting. And so there you have it. Oh, and over here, of course, I added more. Uh, depth chargers, so they fire off the side. And uh, there you have it. This is the USS Battle Wagon, made by Remco. You can find them for, and you know what? You just rebuild them because if you do what I do, you're gonna wanna make it more realistic anyway. And then you just spray paint it gray, and you got yourself a Japanese destroyer. Let's call it a destroyer. So if you're gonna have a Japanese naval fleet, what are you gonna do if you need some uh, some soldiers to attack the shores? So I went and created Japanese naval assault troops. So basically they'd be landing on shore and attacking. And so again, I made these figures from Airfix Multipose. So here we are with the first two poses. Japanese naval commander with pistol and Japanese naval troop firing a Type, a type 100 submachine gun. And I chose to make them in white and uh, gave them the naval flap at the back and put those little anchors on all of their helmets because I think that looks so cool. So figures three and four. Um, Japanese naval troop running with Arasaka. 
rifle. And uh, this one is, this figure is running with a Type 89 uh, mortar discharger, which is like a little mini mortar, and also a, um, a suitcase filled with mortars. And I made them very naval. Because Navy, Navy is cool. Poses five and six, both uh, with the Arasaka rifles, Japanese rifles, and this figure is throwing a grenade. This one pit figure seems to be wearing a pith helmet, and the other one is a, basically a covered helmet with a white canvas cover. And finally, poses seven and eight. We have a figure prone, firing a tight 99 machine gun. And up here, we have a figure kneeling, sharpshooting a Type 100 submachine gun. Those, so, so, those submachine guns were usually only issued to, like, either naval guys or, or Japanese paratroopers. And, of course, you know, the kit that they have in their back. They have a little bread bag. They have uh, an ammunition bag and, and maybe just a little uh, canteen and stuff and little, thing, little bags for ammunition. So now you have it. There is my full complement of Japanese naval assault troops. They just look so damn exotic and cool. Someone's got to make something like this. Mars, are you listening? Okay, I didn't want to do this, but this is a bonus. Because this one is very accessible and very easy to score. This is a boat by MPC that was made in the 60s. Now, the boat, when you get it, it's going to be all kinds of goofy kitty colors, and it's going to be unrealistic and stupid. You just modify it and make it freaking cool. So this is how to do it, man. You, you take off the stupid stuff. You add on a, a, life, a lifeboat on the top, maybe like a, a, a canopy. You stick, stick on a couple tanks, uh, some, some ammunition boxes. You put a better gun on the back and a radio, and you paint it nice. And look how nice it goes with those figures. Whoa, you got like, you have like a guy sitting with his smoke up front here. You have JFK and, 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 uh, and Robert, Robert Kennedy back here. Then you have this guy at the back, you know, walking around with no shirt on. And they're on patrol in the Pacific. McHale's Navy. It's awesome. It's, I love it. And you should score one of these and go Navy. So. What can you tell us about that fateful day? Our captain felt that we'd, we'd been at sea for so long that he felt all his men needed a treat. So what we did is, uh, well, we went to the nearest island, uh, one with lots of really attractive ladies. So, you know, we're having a really good time and everything. And hey, lady! Want to see my pet monkey? Look! I was having such a great time. And me and this beautiful girl, we went for a walk down by the river. And just as she said that she really wanted to touch my monkey, something had to go wrong. <laughs> hey, what's wrong, Chim Chim? What are you, what are you afraid of? <laughs> what?
suddenly caught by surprise! We all had to run back to the ship as fast as possible! There were too many of them! Then suddenly, the worst news of all! A Japanese destroyer! There I was, left adrift, with no water, no supplies, no guarantee I'd ever be rescued. I was at the mercy of the ocean. I didn't even have my monkey. I don't know what ever happened to him. I'm gonna die, and no one's ever gonna find me. Thank God, thank God I have authentic, customized naval dog tags by mydogtag.com, and they specialize in historically accurate World War II dog tags, personalized to your needs. Just mention the Plastic General, and you'll get 50, 50% off. I'm so glad that I did that. I can die knowing. Oh, oh, this shit, sharks! Okay, listen, uh, that's all for today. Um, if, oh yeah, listen, if you like the plastic, hey, if you like the plastic general, please remember to hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell so you can always be notified about, about future episodes. Um, if you have any comments or uh, if you have any criticisms of any, anything that's, that, that's historically, historically accurate, uh, mention them. Uh, I've always answered my uh, replies. Hey, anyway, um, my name is Christian Aldo. I'm the Plastic General. Long live 132 World War II. Uh, see you next time. Hey! Get, get, get away!